And now let's jump into a little Q and A. And we're off. Let me get this out of here. Hold on. <laughs> ah, Dennis Conrad. Thanks to the lovely person who gave me a membership. That's probably Jorky. Jarky, he's probably here again. Sheldon says, I missed the Canadian part. There's two things. One is there's an old, it looks like an old uh, law that pertains to certain provinces in Canada, Ontario, Newfoundland, those type of place, those areas where you can only get up to, I think it said, let me just show it again. I think it was 30,000. Yeah, annual net buy limit of $30,000 in these areas. And again, I've seen this on, on a Reddit post seven months ago, so I'm not for sure this is actually new. But again, I said, who cares? We'll just use a, just use a DEX, buy a bunch of Ethereum because there's no, there's four unrestricted cryptos that did not count towards your limit. And one of those Ethereum and Bitcoin, just use those on a DEX, pretty simple. That's what's up. And back we go. <laughs> Rob, I challenge you to do a full stream without saying the word crypto. It's pretty hard. I mean, like if this channel was about health and fitness, I think I'd be pretty simple. But since the channel is mostly about that, I can just say digital assets about a thousand times. So this is a good question. Kelk says, uh, have you heard about Celsius clawbacks? Yes. And what would you do if they came knocking? Here's a thing. So the Celsius clawbacks is, this is if you took any crypto off of Celsius within 90 days, they're saying that they own that. Well, they don't own that. heck was that there's two there's two different types of wallets that celsius had one was an urn and one was a custody in their terms and conditions the urn that was theirs in the terms and conditions that they clearly say like that but as far as the custody there was no defining guidelines so that wasn't their property that's actually your property that was my property everything that i had on celsius i actually moved over to custody Trans and I was waiting to, to transfer it over because I didn't want to go through the whole process of getting the accredited uh, investor. Because I was like, why should I get that? And you guys don't get that. It was a, it was a thing, it was a stance that I did. I'm glad I did it because that's what it is. Now they're saying like, look, if you took it out within 90 days, we're, gonna, we're, we're thinking about clawing it back. It's only been talked about in, in the courts. I don't see how they could possibly do that. They could probably contact you and be like, you owe us blah, blah, blah. Really? I don't know what happened to that because uh, I can't give it back to you because uh, it was a boning accident. I don't know what happens. Talk to my lawyers. No, I don't think it's going to actually happen. But uh, if it does, it'd be interesting. Love to see how they get all that, all that crypto back. <laughs> I just don't see it actually happening. I think it's more of like just because they say it, everybody talks about it, and it's going to be a big thing. I could be wrong, though. But Rob... So what it sells is try to sell Bitcoin. It depends. It depends on what they what they want to do. Because really what what that Bitcoin should be done is to pay for, of course, it has to pay for their upkeep and their operations because they want to keep the lights on uh, for the Bitcoin mining. But that should go right back into the fund to make all of the investors whole. Full stop. That's it. Uh-oh, just watch Coin Bureau pulling data stored centrally on Google. <laughs> Shocker. Well, it's, it's a centralized uh, data source. Even though it's in the cloud, they have these huge data centers all in these warehouses. That's not surprising. Yeah, Will's, Will says it right. If your funds are in the custody account, you should be able to get your funds back. Trust me. That's where my 3% uh, it was actually sitting. Should have taken it off, but I didn't. And uh, that's it. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. But I mean, that story did give me a little bit of hope. But uh, again, like as far as I understand it, Bitcoin mining is a tricky business. And it's not always profitable, especially if the price goes down precipitously. And we're still hovering around 24, 23K. If it goes out to 30, 40, 50, okay, now we're talking as it, you know, as it pumps out, 100,000 plus Bitcoin per year or whatever it said, that could do a lot of things. The problem is, you know, it has to keep up on that price. And I don't see the crypto market doing much for a couple more years. That's just my opinion. Some people are more bullish than me. 
and that's it. But the, I, but the thing is, is like this, is if it is that case, and Celsius does do this, and Celsius, okay, they say, okay, look, we're gonna mine this Bitcoin, we're gonna keep the lights on, and we're gonna do this for two, three, four years, or however long it takes to make all the creditors whole. And ma imagine this, if they can generate roughly 15,000 Bitcoins like they predict, would you wait two, three, four, five years to get everything back? Or would you be like, no, give it back to me right now? And then the next question is, you know, who's gonna oversee that? Who's gonna make sure they don't screw around with our funds again? I think they would, that's the whole legal process for chapter 11. Maybe they have to put in, they'd have to appoint somebody to actually oversee the whole process so to make sure it's on the up and up. Now that would be interesting, but I see how it could be. That Benjamin Cohen, what is he doing? If you haven't checked out Ben's website, Into the Cryptoverse, it's very interesting. It's got a lot of great charts. I use them. I can't show you, but uh, they're pretty great. I actually included those on, on my new uh, bull run strategy video. Pfft. Pens in the chats. When, when, let me tell you, Ben, I think me and you on some things are on the same, the same wavelength. I don't see a lot of things happening for a while. And I think it could go down a little bit. But... Is that big of a deal? There is, like, it's funny because, like, me and Ben and James, we're, like, on this on this, this continuum. And, like, Ben's, like, way, way over here in bear land. And I'm kind of towards Ben, but I still like to invest in the alts. And James is way over here. <laughs> and he's, like, everyone's going to be great. And I'm, like, I don't know, James. But uh, I appreciate the, the different views. That is for sure. Ah, uh, what else? We're holding the three-minute exponential moving average. That's good. I joined Ben's bull market support band. I'd like to see it hold. Who knows? And that's a dumb one. Oops, I forgot this one. Didn't miss much. So the only thing you missed was Celsius is going to sell their, their mined Bitcoin. There is a... Uh, pension fund that got screwed over $150 million by investing into uh, Celsius. And you got to remember something, and just to take this into context, $150 million for a pension fund, you know, it wasn't just one guy going, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure they had a massive or a pretty good amount of people doing their due diligence, looking at the whole process, looking about what it can be done, taking a look at the, at the risk assessment tools that, that they were given as far as like a pension, pension fund, and they still went forward. Everything works awesome until it doesn't. Technology is great until it isn't. And it's the same thing with these businesses, right? Things just, I mean, Mount Gox was probably awesome back in the day until it got hacked because of whatever, uh, well, the massive hack that it had back in 2014. And it's the same thing along the continuum as all the exchange and all the different things that go on with crypto, even in the DeFi. It works great until it doesn't. That's why like this is the one sector that you can't just set it and forget it, like I used to say. It's not like investing in the S&P 500 going, well, I'll come back in 10 years and I'll probably be up. This is one of those places where you got to be on it like 24-7. And you got to actually keep up to date as much as, much as humanly possible. Because if not, the change is so fast. There's asymmetrical returns, but you got to do uh, an asymmetrical amount of work to keep up with it. Uh, sorry, that's just how it is. But Jungle Inc. became a member well, that's it for today. I'm good to go. <laughs> Thanks, Jungle. I appreciate that. If you don't, if you don't watch Jungle Inc. Inc.'s channel, it's pretty good. I love, I love watching Jungle Inc. when I first got in, especially about the XRP stories. Always good stuff, man. Always good stuff. Gary Reed says, uh, "I didn't stake in Celsius, Voyager, Phantom, any of those cool things people were talking about gains on." Yeah, sometimes it's just it's best just to sit back and go, "Is this really going to make it?" It's all about risk. Actually, I did, a, I, I did a, a quick video on risk. I'm not going to put it on YouTube. I'm only going to put it on the, on the website. Don't freak out. Website's free. Dan teaches crypto. And I said, there's, there's really three things I always ask myself. It's uh, the what, who, and the squeeze. So I always think to myself, uh, what's the worst case scenario? Who's it going to affect? And is the juice worth the squeeze? And what I mean by that is, What's the worst case scenario? So if I come in and I spend 20 bucks on tomato coin per week, whatever crazy, stupid crypto that's out there, uh, 
what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is I lose all my money in tomato coin. Okay, who's that going to affect? Well, it's going to affect nobody because my wife doesn't care if I spend 20 bucks on some stupid crypto. So no big deal. And then is the juice worth the squeeze? Meaning is it, is it likely to go up or is it easy to do? Well, I just put it in a, in, a, in a deck, so no big deal. So sure, I can get away with that. Now let's take the flip side. Okay, I'm going to invest into Ethereum and I'm going to sell my house and my kidneys. And I'm going to put it all in and write it all the way up until the merge and then sell because, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Should work out pretty well. Okay. What's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is uh, it crashes way before then and I lose 50% of what I just put in and I have no house and I need a kidney transplant. So who would that affect? Well, that probably affects the people that are around you, your wife, your husband, your kids. And then uh, is the juice worth the squeeze? Meaning, can I do this? Well, it's very tough to sell your house right now. If we would have done it six months ago, it probably been a good idea. So in that situation, no. So what's the worst case scenario? Who is going to affect? And is the juice worth the squeeze? If you think about those things as far as risk, you really understand that there is a lot of opportunities that I really shouldn't get into. And that's what it is. Ooh, what's up with Jack and a crack? Man, me and you both. Me and you both both got medical. I'm feeling good, feeling okay today. Not as good as yesterday. Taking these supplements, we'll see how it works out. Man, I have been wiped out though. Uh, Jay Young Chow, would you sell your ETH that you bag held from 2018 if ETH skyrockets to 5,000? Profit is profit, right or hold? I'll take 20 years to make it back from mining. I don't know, can we see? First of all, if, if, if Ethereum goes to 5,000 a piece, I wonder if that would even flip let me see. If it goes to 5,000, what's the market cap? Yeah, that would roughly flip Bitcoin if it happened tomorrow. So first of all, I mean, if it did, that'd be great. <laughs> I don't see it happening. And then uh, if it went to 5,000, why take profits? Yes, absolutely. And if people say, well, you got to wait for that merge. Look, I'm never going to time it right. It's just how it is. And if I'm, if I'm up, because I've been buying uh, Ethereum across the way as it goes down below 2,000 and 1,600 and 1,500s. So time to take a little profits. And then as it goes down, which inev inevitably will, because nothing goes up forever, right? Then I feel okay. And I have a little bit of dry powder and I can do the things that I want to do. You know what I really want to do? I'm waiting for this housing market to start crashing around me so, can, so we can pick up more properties. Now that would be awesome. So to answer your question, yes. Capitalist Pig, thanks for the free membership. Jarky, thank you. I'm pretty sure it is. JH Wen Wrench. Let's do that right now. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, let's see. Jayun Chow. Who asked me this? JH. J H. Who wants a wrench? No, not you. Ah, uh, Bert. Jesus got it. Jack and a crack. You already won. No easy wrenches anymore. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. All right. And that's all the wrenches for today. Sorry, everybody. I've got a limit on wrenches. Too much power for me. No, it's not that much power. <laughs> if you can catch a ball, you can catch a... If you can, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Don't wrench me. Wrench me. And I think that's it. Eris says, is there anybody else you follow that's not in your link tree? Yeah, there's a guy named Ryan Holiday. And he does this, uh, he writes a bunch of different books and has a YouTube channel and a lot of social media. And it's all, it's called The Daily Stoic. I actually linked that in the description. If you want to just find some, some mental fortitude, 
uh, listen to and read some of the savings from like uh, a Seneca or a Marcus Aurelius. And that's, you can do for free over at the Daily Stoic. And uh, there's no affiliate link. It's just his website. And you get these, uh, these daily reminders in your email. It's pretty good stuff. Helps, helps out a lot, especially as we get sometimes just get dunked on in the crypto market. Yeah, Daily Stoic is the best. How many models do you own? Uh, apartments or houses? Condos. Mm. Well, we got a couple in Houston and three or four in Puerto Rico, and then we've got some here. Mostly, and then the apartment complex. My wife does the apartment complex. That's her thing, not my thing. So here we got like four or five over in Puerto Rico, three or f four, and then Houston, three. So, and then the complexes and the condos are something else. Yeah, I should. Anything new with Voyager? Yeah, there is kind of, sort of. So, where was this? So I did this video a couple of days ago. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So, let me go back. So over at Dan Teaches Crypto, 100% free, blah, 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 blah. Did I do it in this one? First of all, there's two videos I'd like you guys to watch. One is this one, the 2024, 2025 bull run exit strategy. I've got certain, I've got seven different uh, indicators and they're all free, uh, except for Ben's website, but it's worth it. The time and risk, Pi cycle top, NUPL and time and risk. And the bottom callers, these right here. Anyhow, and I'm just gonna talk about the plan for, for this year. So I like that one, that's a good one. And then uh, as far as for Celsius, there was a video I did, it's, it's, a, it's more like a story time. It just talks about how Zoo and Jeffries Davies from uh, uh, Three Arrows Capital pretty much just wrecked the whole market, dropped it from three trillion to one trillion. I know they weren't the only thing, but they were the big factor, the linchpin that, that caused the casket effect. And in that video, I talked about the amount of money that, uh, that Voyager was holding onto. And in one of those spreadsheets, it talked about the loans that they had. And it said, I think it was like 472 million. And it said uh, EX3AC. And I was, and that's, and I said that wrong. That's, that's excluding uh, three arrows capital. So it looked like the amount of debtors that they had or the amount of um, what they were supposed to uh, look like they had to, to repay was 1.8 billion. And if you add everything up, they had around 1.2 billion. So they're in the hole, I mean, roughly $600 million, which actually is not uh, horrible. Actually, no, sorry, 1.4 to 1.8 and $400 million. And of course, at the end of this month, we're gonna hear about um, all the different offers that are being put on the table, not by FTX, that was a bad offer, but by a bunch of these big, bigger institutions, bigger companies. So I'm looking forward to that. Will I think they'll make everybody whole? I don't know. I don't think it's, I think we're all gonna take a little bit of a haircut. The question is how big? And if I had to put my money on it, to see who would come out of this easier or with the best outcome, probably Voyager first and Celsius second. <laughs> That's it. What's your role in the t-shirt game? I have no role. Uh, I don't know. What's your thought about Project Sango in South Africa? I have no idea. Do you think Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin capital in the coming future? Not anytime soon. So O oh, said Luna actually started it. No, oh, watch this video. Watch this video I just talked about right here. It was really three arrows capital. They were borrowing from everybody. And instead of them, because they were seen as like these wonder kids, instead of them giving up uh, collateral, uh, they would just say, no, 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 we'll, we'll give you 10% interest, 12% interest, 14% interest. 
And that's how they got everybody. And they said, well, you know, we see your balance sheets. Looks like you guys are doing pretty good. Unfortunately, the balance sheets was from who they borrowed from somebody else and from somebody else, somebody else. And it was just a big, really, if you think about it, it's almost a little, it was a Ponzi for, for a while. It started out legitimate and it turned into a Ponzi. I think that's the same thing with Celsius. I could be wrong. We'll see how it comes out in chapter 11. That's what's up. I like the one in Peru. Yeah, me too. I got to go back there very soon. Can't wait. Uh, maybe. So we'll see what they do. So the question is whether Celsius sells Bitcoin or not, despite the coins in your account, they're going to value it as the day of filing it in fiat. And they'll pay it off in fiat, not in kind coins. So I think that would have been true, especially if you would have signed up for the, there was, there was a form you had to fill out uh, through, their, through their legal team, Soretto, whatever their names were. And you could fill it out and you would say how much you were owed in dollars. And then like nobody did it or very few people did it. And they said, I want my crypto back. So now there's supposed to be a new form to fill out with your actual crypto. So you would just say like, I have one Bitcoin and 20 ETH instead of you know, counting it up on the day. Because if that's the case, then they will pay you in cash. When do we hit the moon? I don't know. Not an expert. Is your background a green screen? Yes, it is. I'm in my mom's basement. Green screen. It's just very, very, I, I make it very fancy. Sometimes I even have my dogs walk right through it. I don't feel butted, but it's a bizarre economy. Yes, it is. That's why, like, I think it's amazing. You can go to MSNBC, CNBC, or any YouTube channel and, uh, you know, you'll have one video going, hey, we're going to go through this problem or no, no issues whatsoever. It's going to be a soft landing. And then the next video is like, we're going to go and down in a blazing glory. And it's going to be just like, you know, the worst thing of all time, like a, like a nuclear holocaust. And you just don't know. And that's it. I think we're good. Did I miss anything? What's an absolute banger for the next bull run? Probably Bitcoin. <laughs> Just play it safe. That's what I'm going to do. There's more Bitcoin maxis get minted in these bear runs, especially this one. This one really did suck. Uh, what's your opinion on Bitcoin ATMs? Like Bitcoin at the moment or Bitcoin ATMs like to buy things? I think it's a good way if you want anonymity, but uh, the prices are apparently super expensive to buy it through an ATM. And also on these Bitcoin ATMs, if you buy past a certain amount, you have to do some type of KYC type of thing. So if you want to buy it anonymously, you can do it. It's going to cost you a lot of money. But I think they actually track you along the way. I'm not for sure. I've never used them. I just read the articles on them. I don't like using them. I wouldn't want to use them. All right, and that's it. Ada, Gala, Dot. I don't know, everybody. I don't know. We're coming up in like 40 minutes or so. That's it. I got to get some other things done today. So look, if you like today's video, first of all, thanks for stopping by, hanging out with me for almost 40 minutes. That's pretty great. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, all those things. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks so much. On your way out, just hit the like button. That would be fantastic. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. So adios. Have a good day.